Hello everybody, Michael Spec Gamer here. So today I'll be doing the last TF2 uh, weapon tier list, and this is for the demo man. Now, the reason why I did demo man last is because I actually enjoy playing him more than most classes, but he is one of the hardest for me to use, and I do use him quite often. I actually do like hard hitter classes, and demo man is definitely no exception that he's definitely one of the most powerful. Uh, characters in the game and especially with his explosives but also he's like almost like a glass cannon because of his explosives so the thing, thing here i'm going to be doing is all the tiers are the same as usual that's because you guys probably know like which tier is which here s is like the best of the best d is like you should just avoid using and b is just average so there are many weapons here Dillman probably has the best a, a melee arsenal in the game because of his subclass demo knight and it really depends on how you guys use, see it i'm just going to show you right now so i'm going to do primary secondary and melee weapons like usual for every class and let's see where i put them so first of all we have the alibaba wee booties or alibaba's wee booties and this one is it gives you 25 percent or 25 health more health than usual not percent that would be way too much for delvin um it gives you more health it makes you tankier but you're sacrificing your uh you're just sacrificing your primary weapon which is your grenade launcher and your grenade launcher is probably better i would say for for offense it, he is a defensive class but you do need an offensive weapon this is mandatory if you're not going to go demo knight you do need this if you have this with the shield you can use it i guess you can also use it you can also use it with the uh tiki launchers to make you yourself more tanky pretty much the same as the soldier which is the second second tankiest class in the game and i think it's uh, very, very beneficial for him to have a bit more health but you have to understand you're sacrificing so much this alone will be like b maybe but it, I, I think i would put it at A, depends if you use a shield or not, because with the shield you also get a speed boost. And even though you're just going to use a mirror weapon and become a demo knight, you could technically get you become faster, almost almost as fast as scout. And with enough heads, you definitely will be as fast as scout, or maybe faster. As I explain later. So the next one is the same one, just a rescan, the bootlegger same tier both of these are pretty good if you just combine it with the uh one of the shields here and moving on the now this one is kind of underwhelming but the base jumper it was fixed not nerfed exactly just fixed i guess you can also say i was actually nerfed because before you can just play it twice or more multiple times but now it makes more sense because you usually do it once in real life but then again this game isn't realistic but it's not really that useful because you are becoming a very easy target for snipers once you once you use the parachute. I would put it a B tier. I guess it's good if you use it as like a, a sh like a pretty much a bomber with the sticky traps. But there's no point if soldier can just do it better. He's meant more for that situation. And for the next one, it, we have the lock and ho the lock and load, and this weapon. It was changed in a weird way where you have three pipes, but you only have two in uh in what it shows, which is kind of ridiculous. The same issue with the regular uh grenade launcher. It usually had six, now it has four for the primary ammo, and it's I think it's decent. The three the three uh pills you have there pretty useful i would put it right here just because it's not as good as before you do more damage to buildings which is more effective against uh sentries but also it explodes it not just, not even explodes it just disperses it doesn't explode if it touches the ground which is kind of unfortunate if you're trying to hit someone from a corner you cannot see and that was one of the biggest advantages to delman you can shoot them with geometry you don't even have to be in one area you can just shoot one in one side of the wall and it goes to the other side not even looking at your enemy so this one is pretty good against buildings and it produces it shoots project, uh, projectiles far faster but 
it just is pretty risky to use, especially when you have one less pill. And for the next one, this is easily the best primary weapon for Delman right now. Just gonna tell everyone about this. The iron, but the I was actually gonna call it the uh, iron converter for a second. So the iron bomber is the most, like the best of the best primary weapons for Delman by far. And that's if you go Demo Knight, but also if, even being a hybrid, like using this with the shield and a, a sword, it'll also be pretty useful. But it makes you, it just make it's just better. Uh, the hits can, or not the hits can, the projectiles are bigger. It makes it easier to hit. Also, faster explosive time, which makes it easier for you to actually aim where they, you're going to shoot and it actually explodes before they, uh, the enemy runs out from the area. It's the best weapon. It has less, uh, it has, well, less time and on expo exploding and it has less of an explosive radius. So you can see that as a weakness. Maybe against uh, multiple buildings, but it's just an overall better weapon, especially the sound. It sounds like a freaking basketball you're shooting from there. The next one is the loose cannon. And this weapon, I'll put it right here, or actually right here, the, because these two are pretty much the same. It's not as good as it was before, it was nerfed, but it still has a huge knockback, and you can technically do more damage with it if you, if you double dunk, which is. It shoots these cannonballs, which only knock back the opponent. They don't explode, but you can also make them knock back and explode. So take twice as, twice the damage, and also be it's very useful if you want to just knock them back. So you can also grenade jump with this one without needing to wait for the grenade to explode underneath your feet. So this is pretty useful. It's much better on grenade jumping, just because it has a completely different mechanic compared to the other. Uh, uh, grenade launchers now we have the stock it's slightly worse than the you know what i'm actually gonna put it right here just because i think it's a very good weapon still it's just not as good when it comes to direct hits but it makes it's more of a utility weapon than an actual use weapon for damage so this one right here all these all these uh grenade launchers they all are very good Surprisingly, Demo has very good primaries that are actually not the uh, booties. And the, uh, the regular grenade launcher, the stock one, it's pretty good. It's better for sentry nests, I would say, than the other ones here. It's, but it's more situational than, like, the stock weapon is more situational than the Iron Bomber, which is arguably the best weapon in the game. Also, I would say most Demo men, when I see them, they always use this one. Or like the default, it's, they're way too popular. So pretty much better radio, explosive radius, which is good against buildings, but otherwise, better to use the Iron Bomber if you're fighting one versus one. For the next one, we have the secondaries, and these are the shields. So the Tide Turner, immediately the Tide Turner is the best shield in the game for multiple reasons. You have more utility, you can actually jump with it and strafe all over the map you have full control turning control with this one compared to the other ones and it has a weaker uh resistance to them compared to fire and explosives but you just need that mobility for them and he's one of the slowest classes without the mobility combine this, this one with the uh loose cannon and you can technically fly almost everywhere it's crazy you have more control over it than sticky jumping which you can do with these ones right here just saying the Titan is, is the best weapon for utility and mo the most flexible of the shields. Then we have the Splendid Screen. I would put it right here. It's not too bad, but it's... The Splendid Screen does more damage. It definitely is a more of a damage-dealing uh, weapon. It also gives you crits if you charge it long enough in time correctly. It's a good pair with the uh, Skull Cutter, which you have right here. It can pretty much kill almost everyone in one shot aside from heavies. But it's pretty powerful, a pretty powerful combo. But making you use it's over here, which I'll explain later. So for the next one, we have the this one is arguably the best for defense against pyros and soldiers or anyone that has explosives. The charging charge. And this one, 
I would say it's not as powerful when it comes to the spin and screen or as useful as the tight turner when it comes to mobility. But all of them have their uses. I would just say this is slightly lower just because it's pretty useless against hit scan weapons, which is uh, Demo Knight's biggest weakness. And it's pretty good just against soldiers, demos, or anyone who has projectiles and pyros especially. Before it was actually it was actually uh, nerfed. It, will, it made Delman Im immune to Afterburn, which is pretty great, but they, they changed it again, which Delman doesn't have that resistance anymore. So I'm just going to put it right here. And for the next one, we have the Quickie Bomb Launcher. And this one, surprisingly, it's not as bad as I thought, but I'll put it right here. It can kill scouts pretty easily. It's good for squishy characters. Also, I would say it's more, it's definitely more of an offensive take on the CQ bomb launchers. Best for deep, for offense. Very weak on defense. But I'll just put it right here. You have half the ammo capacity, so only four stickies instead of six. Or instead of eight, I mean. My mistake there. And also, you can charge it faster. So you can actually launch it far further, giving Demoman probably the best ranged weapon in the game. Because these ones actually explode. Not on contact, but they also explode based on time. Unlike if you guys know Overwatch, there's a character who has to have three bounces to actually make it explode. Junkrat. So this is just, I'm just going to put it here. That was a bit off topic, but I'm just comparing like why this is arguably the best for range. And for the next one, the Scottish Resistance. This one, I would put it right here. It's a very hard weapon to use if you use it in offense, which you, you should never use it in offense as long as you know that it has a great uh, arm timing which you have to wait for it to explode also it has 14 stickies this is the strongest burst weapon in the game but also it's the hardest to set up because it takes you a while to set it up you can put more than eight stickies you can put 14 stickies that's six more stickies on a trap or you can even manually uh you have to look at it directly though or be right under it to detonate it. So unlike the other ones, this one you have to look at it, which can be very distracting if you have a spy behind you or someone attacking you from behind. And this is pretty good, I would say. And Saxton Hill mod, if you actually know how to use it with crits and pretty good for trapping on defense, but otherwise I would avoid it when it comes to offense. These are like two polar opposites of each other. The next one, ex is the sticky jumper and the sticky jumper is i'm gonna put it right here it was nerfed before you can actually place eight stickies and launch everywhere so especially about this one it has 200 percent hopefully i'm actually correct in this one it says here yeah 200 percent max secondary ammo which is 72 m uh stickies there and also does minus minus 100 damage so you can sticky jump anywhere just remember you have four damage as well i guess you can you can combo this one with the base jumper but you just become a million a meme a meme demo man at this point and i'm sure people use these two uh with the cable before it was nerfed because now it's pretty bad i'm gonna be talking about that right after so yeah, Sticky Jumper is pretty good for distances, but you cannot take the in Intel or the Intel case if you have it equipped, which is kind of sucks. But now they nerfed it, now you, you, you can only place two stickies instead of eight, which is unfortunate for this one. It used to be very good. It will be fun to go from a huge map from one place to another almost instantly, but they changed it. So I'm just going to put it right here. This would have been S tier if it had a buff still. So the next one is, oh no, I kind of forgot to mention, this is a pretty good combo with the, with the primary weapons here, which is pretty useful because the Delman doesn't have the mobility. Also, you don't have much control of uh, sticky jumping, but unlike the tight turner, but you also can go to point A to point B pretty quickly, which is pretty useful. And technically, you're the fastest character in the game if you have that. So for the next one, you have the Islander, and the Islander is... Arguably the best weapon for Delmonite, just because of the amount of heads you can build up. So every time you kill someone, you gain, you technically gain a head and you gain five health more and you become a bit faster with Demoman. So you become more tankier and tankier until you are at 235 health. And you're almost as tanky as a heavy. I mean, you're still, 
You're still 65 uh, HP off from him. But you become very fast and very dangerous. Also, you have longer range than the regular uh, meal weapons with this weapon right here. So it's pretty useful as a demo, a demo man, but it makes you tankier when you have the booties with you. The next one is a Persian uh, Persuader. And this one, it's been nerfed or changed to a point where I think it's not as good as it was before. Before, uh, you would actually gain health from ammo packs. And now it's not as good because it also decreases your amount of... Uh, I mean, this, this is before you will not be able to get ammo packs. You will just convert into, it will convert into HP packs and you'll be vulnerable without any ammo. So having this one as a pure demo knight is a must still. You can still use, you can still definitely use these primaries and you get a bit of ammo, but this weapon is not as good anymore as it was before. It's a good combo with the splendid screen. I mean, it was a set before. Um, but it's still, it's not as good as it was before, before the nerf. Now, uh, we have the, oh, also, I forgot to mention, you can charge super quickly with this one. It's pretty much like the, uh, one of the spies knives, which just regenerate, um, the, uh, cloak meter super quickly, or the Letrin J, hope, hopefully I'm correct, uh, saying it correctly. The Letrin J or Letranger, Letranger, <laughs> hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly. But yeah, it's similar to that weapon, just for Delman. It charges, it charges his uh, charging meter far faster every time he hits, and also it just charges faster because of the passive ability of this weapon. So for the next one, we have the st uh, Stock Sticky Bomb Launcher. And this one, I'll put it right here. It was nerfed a while back. Not sure if it was in Jungle Inferno, but... The arm time, the arming time before it exposed to do full damage, um, what's changed, it was a bit delayed. It was meant more for not to keep spamming, but actually using it as a defensive weapon. Because now we have the sticky bomb, the quickie bomb launcher would have been redundant if we have this one, and then we have this one doing almost the same thing. And I just put it here because it's far better in damage, and also you don't have to look when you detonate. So you can actually protect the intel capture the fag or intel you want to whatever you want to uh, call it and you can technically kill anyone without even looking at them you just have to right click and it explodes unlike the scottish resistance here now the skull cutter and skull cutter arguably the most powerful it is probably the most powerful weapon or real weapon in the game um i'll put it right here just because the islander you start with Minus 50 health and you have, or actually minus 25, I'm going to stick there again. Um, minus 25 health, 150 health for Delman, so you become as tanky as Medic all the way to, well, actually it can be 175 if you have the booties, but most Delman don't even use the booties, they use the, uh, the other primary. So it really depends between one, one, uh, 215 to 235. That's pretty much what their health will be, and they usually use this one with the combo of the expanded screen or the titan for their movement issue, which is minus, it's minus, um, let's see if it's 20 or 15. So it does 15% slower speed to yourself, which is, makes you almost as slow as a heavy, kind of sucks, but you're pretty, you're pretty much the most powerful uh, melee weapon class in the game. You pretty much, in medieval mode, you just don't want to be messed with, especially when there is no random critical hits, hits uh, downside to it, unlike the other weapons. Also, 75% slower deploy in holster time. All the big weapons, all these three weapons, including the Havza Zatoichi and... I keep forgetting, I know of this one, that clayed more. That clayed him more, I keep forgetting the name. They have a delayed holster time, which means it will take you almost twice as long to equip them. So it's better not to use them as a hybrid demo knight because you'll definitely be uh, pretty weak and vulnerable for at least a second or so before you even equip these weapons. But I'll just place it here just because it's, it can one-shot any class in crit uh, critical hits. And you'll most likely win almost every fight because of its long range. Also, it's more powerful than the Islander demo until it gets multiple heads. 
And it's one of the only ways to counter him once he becomes very overpowered with like 5 or 10 heads, depending on how fast he is. Now the K-Bird. This is probably the worst weapon for Demoman. It was nerfed to the ground after, I'm sure people complain about Demoman jumping with the Sticky Jumper or pretty much any mobility weapon. And just killing snipers left and right without even them knowing where he comes from, from, a, from the sky and kills them in one shot. This was also used with the spell and screen to do around 300 damage, but now it's been nerfed to not even... Sometimes it's, it's very inconsistent. It sometimes kills... It can sometimes kill um, a soldier, but sometimes it cannot even kill a, a scout. Like, it doesn't make any sense. The base damage is very random, and it doesn't re regenerate, so it's a pretty useless weapon, I would say, at the current time. You see, it was a meme weapon, but now it's not even a meme weapon anymore. It's like, I would put another tier here if I could. And probably call it the, just avoid it at all costs. Probably the worst, worst weapon in the game so far. Just, I'm sad that the Kaber lost its specialty. It was one of the only explosive uh, meal weapons you have. Actually, it's the only explosive weapon, meal weapon you have in the game, which is kind of, kind of a bummer. Kind of wish actually could... We could actually throw it maybe at the enemy, but it just it was just ruined. Now we have the pain train. And the pain train is not as bad as I would say. Definitely better than the caber, but definitely low in the bottom tier. It's it's good for the uh, same as a soldier. It's good for picking up uh capture points faster. You pretty much become like a scout twice as fast to capture a point. Otherwise, it's pretty useless against every other scenario and almost a downside to everything else. Also, I have to remember the caber. I forgot to mention, but the caber is so low here compared to even the pain train just because it takes twice as long to... Like, it has way too many downsides. I can't even... Like, right here. Deals only damage if that... Doesn't make any sense here. Deals only melee damage if the head is destroyed, which means it does like, like 55 damage or even lower than the base of a punch 20 percent attack speed penalty no random critical hits like there's so many downsides to it and it's just not that good anymore even though it's a last resort every other meal weapon is pretty much better for the omen also 100 percent slower to switch switch to speed which makes him just pointless to use and that's why even the pain train is better despite it having a more damage vulnerability or bonus vulnerability for the demo man. Now we're getting to the Claymore, and this one is one of the least used weapons for demo man, but it's not as good. I'm just gonna put it right here. It has its uses, but they change it to the point where the 15% damage penalty or vulnerability while active is pretty much pointless because you actually have it's it's worse than it was before in the nerf. We're just going to pre-pressing it here. The 0.5 increase in charge duration, with, it's not as good. Like Just charging a bit for a half a second longer, is it makes a difference, but it's just not enough compared to all the downsides it has. And it has 50% longer um, melee range, but almost every weapon, almost every weapon here has 50% longer melee range. So it's kind of pointless to use. And this is where the have the Tsurichi comes in. This weapon... It was nerfed again or changed so you can actually move it whenever uh or switch it whenever you need to i would put it right here it's definitely better than the, it's pretty much a better version of the claymore or claymore i guess i could, I'm just gonna call it but it's definitely a better version because it actually gives you 50 percent health back after you kill someone and they change it by not so you're not having honor bound to keep it on you you cannot switch it now you can switch it but you have to sacrifice 50% of your health, which you should be very careful when you use it. I would use it as a last resort. But as a demo man, a demo man you can technically be very dangerous if you use the, uh, this weapon combined with the tight turner. Because you can actually gain a uh, chill charge pretty quickly if you kill someone with it. So these two are very good combos. Almost an endless demo knight charger combo, I'll call it. But just avoid using this if you're using it as a... Uh, as a hybrid you should not use you should not use it if you have a hybrid demo man here or a demo knight and for the last one there is another weapon but it's not here 
the same reskin as the bottle. I mean, there are multiple reskins that aren't shown here. But this weapon here, it's better than these two here for the both scenarios. But I'll put it right. I will put it like surprisingly, the bottle is not as bad as I would say. I would put it right here. So it's it's pretty much it has not much benefits. And honestly, I think it should have a bleeding effect after it cracks, but I guess that would be too much of a change to a stock weapon. And Delman is the only class to have a bottle as a weapon, which is ridiculous, but he drinks from it and he uses, a, uses it as a weapon, which is because he's not sober. And from this list right here, the bottle, I'll put, it, I'll put it on average just because I think it's better than all these weapons behind. This is more, more for a gimmick. This one, you just should not use it unless if you won't have infinite charge, but you, you lack the uh, surviving capacity with it. And this one is just a worse half to Ichi. Well, you have the, these ones which are... This one is very situational for capture the point, and the caber is just underpowered and garbage at this point. I'm, just, I'm sorry for the caber fans, but if you have, if you have a professional kill streak caber right now, at this point, I'm not even sure how you're going to sell it. It's going to be pretty hard to sell it, even if you needed to. I'm just going to hand it to you guys. If you actually have a professional kill streak weapon like this, or for this one, like you, you might as well uh, have it stuck in your inventory. So this is the list for the Delman's uh, weapons. And he has quite a lot in A tier and S tier. Not as much as in the lower end. Only two true weapons that are pretty bad. But I would say the uh, uh, the average, like the lower average right here, past the uh, parachute, that's where usually the worst weapons are. But Delman doesn't have many bad weapons. All of them are pretty good. Most of them are pretty good. Like, from the looks of it, around 85% of them are pretty good. Just, uh, like, four of them are meh, but I mean, one is garbage, and, four, and three of them are pretty decent, at least, still. They're still usable for certain situations. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Comment below if you have other opinions, maybe if you, if you don't agree with it. And I'd like to hear your opinions as well. I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.